Rapture, rapture, rapture. Anyone in the Christian community who has been around any length of time has heard of this word and doctrine most likely. Many have also heard this word is not in the Bible, and to a degree that is true. Kinda. It is not found in any of the English translations anywhere in the world throughout history. However, the English word rapture comes from a Latin word which comes from a Greek word found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17 in the Greek manuscripts. That verse states, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. The phrase caught up comes from a Greek word, harpazo. According to Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, that Greek word means seize by force, snatch up, suddenly and divisively, like someone seizing bounty, spoil, or prize, to take by an open display of force, i.e. not covertly or secretly. In John 6.15, it states, Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. The phrase, take him by force, is a translation of the Greek word harpazo. In John 10.28, it states, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any snatch them out of my hand. The word snatch is a translation of the Greek word harpazo. In Acts 8.39-40, it states, Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing, but Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. The phrase caught away is a translation of the Greek word harpazo. You get the idea, but that doesn't explain how we call this thing the rapture. Well, in the Latin Vulgate, the Latin translation of the Bible, the word harpazo is translated rapturo, which is where we get the word rapture. It doesn't matter what we call it, though. The doctrine is sound and scriptural. Other allusions to the rapture is also in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 54. The Old Testament made allusions as well and can be found in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3, Isaiah 26, verses 20 through 21, and Psalm 27, verse 5. Now, the debate rages about when this event takes place. I'll leave that for others to debate. For now, suffice it to say, the rapture is in the Bible, just like the doctrine of the Trinity is as well. Saying a word isn't in the Bible when the doctrine is clearly taught in the Bible is remarkably disingenuous. That begs the question, however. Are you ready for the rapture? If not, stay tuned for the next segment coming up to know how to be ready. At this point in the podcast, I want to reach out to you. And if you have never done so, if you have never entered into a saving relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to do that today. All you need to do is believe. Believe that Jesus is who he said he was. He was God in the flesh. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Confess him as Lord. And the Bible says that you will be saved if you do that. If you truly believe in your heart that he is who he said he was and that he did exactly what he said he would do for you, you will be saved. It is simply that easy. A lot of people say prayer, prayer. And that's great to confess and put your mind and heart and everything through a process, if you will to embody what has already taken place in your heart by simply praying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And now I confess you as Lord. Please take control of my life and I wanna follow you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's all you need to do and your life will change. Your life will change not so much materially, not so much in terms of the world, but your life will change in your standing before God in that you may know that you can have eternal life. The Apostle John wrote that when he was pinning 1 John. He said, I write these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Not that you can hope, not that you can wonder, but so that you can know. 
Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast.